Synth1 is a full-fledged synthesizer that's integrated into WISE. When it's connected to a MIDI-based music track, you can take advantage of creating a lot of sonic diversity in your music with minimal impact on memory or space taken on disk. To experiment with the capability of Synth1, we'll use this Boss A section of music composed for the Cube game's Big Boss Fight. Let's take a listen. Now two of the tracks are MIDI tracks that are already set to target these sound SFX objects that are already set up with Synth1. To understand how that was done, be sure to watch the video in this series that explains the process. Now let's take a listen to the arpeggio track on its own. And now let's take a quick listen to the melody on its own. Now, we'll further modify these sounds, but as we work, we'll need to repeatedly play the Boss A music segment in order to hear how the adjustments in, in sound in context. Uh, so we'll pin the transport. Uh, the pin feature locks the currently focused objects into place, regardless of what selections we make. We'll start by modifying the sound of the arpeggio synth line. Let's take a quick listen to it by itself. Now for the MIDI tracks, we're going for an 8-bit kind of sound from those classic video games. To adjust the sound, we'll need to look at the Arpeggio Synth Sound SFX object that is configured with the Synth1 plugin as its sound source. So we'll switch to the designer layout, and then we'll select the Arpeggio Synth Sound SFX object, and then in the Contents Editor, we'll double-click the plugin icon to open the Source Editor. Now the foundation of a synthesizer sound is built with its oscillators, each providing a type of sound based on a waveform. In Synth1, you have two primary oscillators, plus a third one dedicated to creating noise. The default waveform for oscillators 1 and 2 is a sine wave. By changing the waveform assignment, we can change the core sound. Let's change the waveform property of oscillator 1 to square. And then oscillator two, let's change it to sawtooth. Let's go back and take a listen. Now changing the waveform type may also change the perceived volume. The synth is a little bit loud, but we can adjust the volume of each oscillator. Now individual control allows us to change the balance of the volume between the oscillators, creating different combination tones. We'll set the first oscillator to minus 15. And the second oscillator we'll set to minus 12. And play it again. Right. Now to thicken the sound a bit, we can detune each oscillator's pitch. The values are expressed in cents uh, in the transpose property. Uh, we'll set, set the oscillator 1 to minus 6 cents, and then we'll set oscillator 2 to a positive value of 6 cents. Let's take a listen. Now we can hear that the sound feels much wider, much thicker. Uh, Synth 1 even provides an FM frequency modulation feature that allows the sound of oscillator 2 to interact with the development of oscillator 1's tone providing even more sonic options. We'll set the SM, FM value to 75. Okay, so now we're beginning to achieve that 8-bit type of sound we set out for. A major difference in working with MIDI tracks is that there is no given volume that they will play at. Remember that the volume of the track is completely derived from the sound that the MIDI track is assigned to and making it impossible for the composer to deliver a MIDI file that can predictably blend with the other audio tracks being provided. This means that extra care has to be taken in setting the overall volume of the source plugin. Um, the sound may be a bit loud compared to the rest of the music, so we can adjust the volume down a little by adjusting the level property. I'll set this to minus eight dB. Now adjusting the level property does not affect the relative balance that we've already established between the oscillators.
While many of the properties found in the Synth1 source editor will be familiar to anyone that's used a synthesizer, something that's missing are envelope settings that would control how the sound fades in or out for each note played. With Synth1, using an envelope with the sound is possible, but the approach to do this follows the model of how share set modulators can be used to control properties found throughout WISE via RTPCs. In fact, you may have noticed that the RTPC icon for the output level property is blue. This is because the envelope RTPC is attached to the output level property in Synth1 by default. We can access this functionality by clicking the RTPC tab in the source editor. Now here we see a line that indicates that the output level is controlled by the modulator envelope. By selecting this line, we see an RTPC curve is displayed. Now it's extremely important to understand that this is not a visual representation of the envelope being applied to the sound. It instead represents the range or intensity the envelope has on the sound. In this example, the envelope will start the attack at minus 120 decibels and it will have a maximum sustain level of zero decibels. To adjust the actual envelope values, we need to open the modulator editor We'll click the Browse button to the right of the assignment. All right, now here we see uh, settings common to envelopes used in synthesizers, like attack and uh, sustain and release. Now anything that's a time property is expressed in seconds. To create a more staccato feel, we'll sh shorten the attack of the, and the release times. We'll set the attack time to zero seconds, and we'll set the release time Instead of being 0.5 seconds, we'll do 0 0.05 seconds. Now when we play the track, yeah, now we can hear how each note is much more pronounced, making it easier for each individual note to be heard in the mix. Low frequency oscillators, commonly known as LFOs, are another common feature found in most synthesizers. Don't misunderstand the name as having something to do with low frequency sound generation. An LFO is instead a way to modify property settings by changing a value of a property over and over and over again in a defined pattern that repeats at a specified rate. We'll explore the use of an LFO in conjunction with the Boss A melody track. Let's go back to the interactive music layout and take a listen. Now, this track is targeting a different sound SFX object with a synth one set up as a source. Now, we can hear that this track has longer sustained notes, and we'll use an LFO to create a vibrato sound that can be heard on these longer notes. Vibrato is a repeating rapid rise and fall of the sound's pitch, so LFOs work well to create this effect. So let's go back to the designer layout, and we'll select the Melody Synth Sound SFX object, click on its Synth1 plugin uh, so, so we can see its source editor. Now, when we look at this, uh, we can see that uh, it's got the various properties of Synth1, uh, but in, what we're going to do in this case is look at the RTPCs tab, and we see the, uh, the envelope as we saw in the previous plugin, uh, but we don't see anything related to an LFO. However, we can add one. We'll click the selector, and then we're gonna choose the property that we wanna modify. In this case, it will be oscillators one's transposition function. Now we need to assign an LFO to control that property. We'll click the selector menu, choose LFO. Now there is no pre-configured LFO as there was with the envelope we used earlier. So choose LFO new, and we'll name this uh, Synth LFO Vibrato. This creates a modulator's share set that can be reapplied to other synthesizers. Now, just as we've learned with envelopes, this RTPC curve that's being displayed doesn't represent the LFO itself, but instead represents the amount of intensity the LFO will have on the selected property. The vertical axis represents the change in pitch expressed in synths. 
And so currently, there would be no pitch change regardless of any changes we make to the LFO properties. To change this, we'll need to adjust the point on the right side uh, for the vibrato effect. Now, we don't want to change this too much. Uh, we'll, so we'll zoom in on the vertical axis and let's set the maximum value to about 150. So we'll set it right about here, uh, but we can enter exact values by entering them in for the Y axis property, 150 cents. Now let's set the properties for the LFO itself. We'll click the browse button. And in the modulator editor, uh, we see a depth property. Now this, think of this depth property as a percentage, indicating that the depth or intensity currently set to 100% means that all 150 cents that we defined earlier would be applied for, vib for the vibrato. Uh, what we're gonna do is though, we're gonna change the frequency though of the LFO uh, to set it to six, and this is expressed in Hertz. So the vibrato will happen six times per second. All right, now let's check and see uh, if the effect is, uh, sounds like what we want. All right, so now when we play the music track, we clearly hear the vibrato effect on the melody line. While the vibrato effect is working, it feels like it's a bit much to have it occur all the time. When a musician plays a keyboard, they will often use a physical control called a modulation wheel to modify the sound when desired. The movement of the modulation wheel is communicated with a special type of MIDI message called a continuous control number. There are many different control numbers in the MIDI protocol, but the one generally used in conjunction with a modulation wheel is continuous control number one. When the synth lead MIDI track was recorded, the keyboard player turned up the modulation wheel during the longer notes at the end of the phrases, presumably to create a vibrato, but only for the longer notes. To create the intended effect, we can use control number one's data that's present in the MIDI track to modify the LFO's range property in real time. To the left of the depth property, we can see an RTPC symbol. Because it's gray, this means that this property is not being controlled by an RTPC. Let's go ahead and double click it. And that automatically opens the RTPC tab. And what we'll do is uh, click the selector button and then choose that we want to modify the depth. Now, uh, on the x-axis, we'll choose what we want to modify it with. In this case, we'll choose MIDI, and then the group of control numbers 0 through 31, and then specifically choose control number 1, modulation. Now, every MIDI continuous control number has a value that ranges from 0 to 127. This is represented on the bottom of the RTPC graph. Now, currently, the curve indicates that regardless of the modulation, the LFO's depth will always be at 100%. So we need to change this so that if the modulation value is low, the value of the depth property will be two. Drag the left control point all the way down to zero. Now we can further modify the response so that the modulation value must be fairly high before the vibrato is noticeable. Right click anywhere on the curve, and then we'll choose the exponential base three curve. And now let's take a listen. Uh, now we can hear that the vibrato effect occurs, but only during the longer notes. Now, now let's take a listen to all the tracks of the Basse music. We'll go back to the interactive music layout, turn solo off and play. All right, now with your understanding of Synth 1, you can easily go back and customize the sounds of all your synth tracks to your liking.